almost unbelievable how many people still are interested in making things themselves. In almost any Western country, you can buy all the parts and equipment you need for reasonable prices. But people are still looking for special parts, sometimes components from long ago. Walking across a radio flea market, I found a couple of used stepper motors, possibly from scraped printers. Bought two of them, for future requirements, or experiment, not knowing exactly for what purpose. Whether you tune a radio, make adjustments to measurement equipment, or simply put the audio volume up or down, a push button is sometimes not ideal. What you wish for, is an old-fashioned rotary controller, and turning it to a precise level or frequency. And for my latest design, and VCO, and modulator, I just want that. The rotary encoder, is an important part, of this frequency control unit. In this day of age, a digital rotary encoder cost only a few euros. But it's a mechanical device, that consists of a small moving mechanical contact, sliding over tiny contacts or circuit board. Although in practice it seems to be working reasonably, it did not feel good, adjusting a high-frequency tuning device that way. Remembering my walk on the radio flea market, and playing around with the spindles of those little motors, I felt resistant from an internal magnet. Like in the old days, the dynamo on your bicycle. The dynamo produces electricity, so why not this stepper motor? Connecting the output of the motor to an oscilloscope confirmed my suspicion. Turning the spindle of that little motor carefully, the output voltage was around the hundreds of millivolts. Giving it a strong turn, output voltage became around 10 volts peak peak. So, not bad at all. There were four wires coming out of the stepper motor, so I presumed the internal coils were 90 degrees shifted to one and other. Checking this on the scope, again confirmed the assuming. So, this motor could well function as a rotary encoder. It could output not only a digital signal, but because of the face difference, it could simply encodes the turning direction, by comparing the two signals. So it could well serve as an ideal rotary encoder. In my old archive stock, I found a lot of 741s amplifiers. Those were the days. Also a D-flip flop, the 7474 version HCT. So it could operate from 3 to well over 12 volts. Looking at the schematic diagram, we see the output voltage of the motor connected to limiting diodes. Then the signal from the motor, is fed to the input of the 741, amplifier. There is no feedback arrangement, so the amplification is at its maximum. Giving out a square wave, on its outputs. No matter how fast you turn the spindle. The first signal, let's call it the data signal, is fed to the data input of the 7474D flip-flop. The second signal, let's call it the clock signal, is also fed to the 7474 but on the clock input. If the upgoing clock arrives on the moment the date signal is high, it will set to flip-flop. If the clock arrives on the moment the data is low, it will set the output of the 7474 in the other state. So thanks to the fact that signals are 90 degrees shifted, according to the direction of spindle rotation, the D flip-flop will give a high or low output. The circuit diagram speaks for itself. The clock signal is buffered by a transistor, and the supply voltage can be adjusted to fit different applications, with respect of course, to the used integrated circuits. A rotary encoder that will last a lifetime, and far beyond.
until the time we no longer use equipment that needs to be adjusted. Nobody knows.